Hello again. Okay. Now, the process of decriminalizing sex work in the country has taken a major step forward. The Sexual Offenses and Related Matters Amendment Bill is now open for public comment. In November last year, Cabinet approved a draft statute to abolish criminal penalties for sex work. According to the bill, buying and selling adult sexual services will no longer be a crime. A retired judge, Edwin Cameron, is calling on Parliament to adopt the bill as soon as possible. He joins us now via Zoom. Judge Cameron, good afternoon. Welcome to today. Thank you very much uh, for your time. Say, you argue that decriminalization bill, the decriminalization of sex work, is a big step. How so? It's a big step, Dan, and what a pleasure to be on your show and to be with ENCA's viewers. It's a big step because it's overdue, very long overdue. The law is irrational. It's harmful, particularly to women. It's a holdover from our terribly repressive, moralistic apartheid past. And the minister, in introducing it, has really explained very well how decriminalizing the sale of sexual services will help us to protect women as they should be. But there are voices that would disagree. I mean, you've got the moralist lobby that's against this. Yes. Dan, they're warning, and I heard this this morning on, on one of your competitor shows, that this is going to lead to the collapse of the moral universe. It's going to lead to drug cartels. It's going to lead to mass uh, trafficking of people. Not true, Dan. Uh, what we are doing here is a simple corrective. The, the real question is, what do we want the criminal law to do in our society? There's a lot that the criminal law must do. It must target violence. It must target uh, uh, syndicates. It must target state capture. But must it target what people are doing with their bodies with another consensual adult in private? Now, that's a question for me as a gay man, because I grew up under apartheid. I was persecuted as a gay man under apartheid. And when the Constitution came, I was promised equality on the grounds of sexual orientation. The Constitutional Court struck down the crime of sodomy and various other crimes that afflicted me as a gay man. Now, the sex work issue is very similar. It's also similar to another important hangover from our apartheid past. The Immorality Act, which enshrined the persecution of sex workers, also enshrined persecution of people having sex across the color line. A terrible, disgraceful hangover of moralism. Now, this uh, is very similar to both that. Why do we want to tell people across the race, uh, across the racial dividing line, that they cannot have sex with each other? It's a private matter. That argument didn't prevail under apartheid. It didn't prevail for gay men, and it didn't prevail for sex workers. So what we are doing now is simply to clean up an, a, a noxious area of our criminal law and in doing so we're going to help so, protect vulnerable women who sec, uh, 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 are in demand for their sexual services but yeah if the law changed one would presume judge and you'd know this better than i do that government would have to come up with uh, uh, regulations around sex work well, well said dan you're making an important point because we uh, regulate where can hawkers be, where can walls be, where can a pick and pay be, can it be next, right next to a checkers? So the sale of all services is regulated. And it should also be regulated for sexual services. We can do that more rationally if we say, yes, you can advertise. Yes, these are the areas where, 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 where men can come and, uh, and, 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 and loiter and solicit, and you can be around. So you might not want it in certain residential areas. You might want it in certain uh, uh, commercial areas. So all of that will happen. And the minister, Minister Ronald Lamola, said that there will be eventually legislation to regulate the sale of sexual services. But the important thing that's happening now is that we are going to stop persecuting mostly women, but also transgender and, 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 and queer people who offer sexual services for sale. Yeah, and I mean, many uh, activists in this space have told us time and time again that uh, uh, one of the benefits of decriminalizing sex works would be the ensuring the dignity and safety of those who, who are involved in sex work. 
I think that's right, Dan. You know, the moralist lobby, I think the impulse behind them is really, we are going to tell you how you must use your body. Now, no one should tell me how I use my body if I'm with another consenting adult in private. But they say that they want to protect women. Well, let the women decide themselves. We accept in supporting Minister Lamola's bill. We accept that there is trafficking of women, vulnerable people and children. That's not, that, that's not related to sex work. We are confusing the, air, the, the, the issues of trafficking and sex work. So we must protect women, but doing so by decriminalizing sex work is exactly the way to go. At the moment, the fact that women are criminalized when they sell their sexual services means that the police can target them. Very unfortunately, that happens. It's not only that they are shaken down for bribes, but sometimes, and this is reported fairly frequently, policemen say, I'll let you go if you give me sex. So it's, it's a horrible form of rape. And we will protect women from that kind of harassment, not only by police, but by their clients that make them vulnerable. And this is a very important reason for us all to support this uh, improvement in our criminal law. Yeah, just very brief as we conclude, uh, Judge. Uh, are there countries in the world where they have decriminalized sex work and it has not led to an increase or, uh, of, in, in, of, of sex work industry as the, the moral voices are warning us it, it, it would happen? Indeed, Dan, we've got practical examples. One of them, but not only uh, uh, New Zealand. One of them is New Zealand, but there are other examples too. 2003, 20 years ago, the sky was also going to come fall down on New Zealand. There was going to be an increase in sex work, increase in sex workers. There was going to be child uh, exploitation rings and international syndicates, and none of that happened. The number of sex workers in New Zealand has remained stable, and women report from New Zealand that they are better protected, that they feel safer, that they can negotiate better with clients, and that they no longer are harassed by the police.